Welcome to my intermediate accounting discussion for 2310, carrying on our discussion on revenue recognition. And our goal in this pincast is to look at revenue recognition on the cost recovery method. Remember, you don't get a free pick according to generally accepted accounting principles. You must use the method to reflect the facts best for you. And we like to use delivery if we can. But if there's some uncertainty, we'll use the installment method. If there is significant uncertainty as to whether we'll ever recover or not, we're going to use the cost recovery method. I'm going to use the same set of facts I used on my last problem to look at the cost recovery method. And you'll notice this is even more conservative. We have to recover 100% of our costs before we pick up any revenue. Let me bring in some facts for you. So, this time we're looking at the cost recovery method. We're using the same facts as our last problem. We had installment sales. I guess that should say installment sales, huh? In 2013, the amount of 360000 cost of goods sold would have been 234 Gross profit realized, if I were using the point of sale method, would have been 126000 In 2014, my installment sales were 350000 My cost of goods sold would have been 245 and My gross profit would have been 105 But because so much uncertainty exists, I'm not going to recognize any revenue until I've completely recovered my costs for 2013, that's 234,000. For 214, that's 245. Let's go about doing our journal entries. Good news here is the journal entries for 2013 to recognize revenue are the same in our first set of entries as in the installment method. We set up an installment receivable for 2013 and the amount of 360000 taken from our sales. We take out of inventory 234000 because the goods have left the building. And we have, you got it, deferred gross profit for the difference. We have not recognized any income. Remember, that's a contra asset. In the amount of 126,000. Let's record our collections for 200 or for 2013. We get cash in the amount of 150,000, and we record that against our installment receivable in the amount of 150,000. Then we need to check and see if we've got any of our costs recovered yet. Where our costs from 2013, shall recall, are 234000 And I have now collected, in 2013, 150000 So I have not yet recovered my costs. And until I collect the remaining difference, which I believe in this case is 84000 I will show no profit. So for 2013, there is no entry to record realized gross profit because there isn't any. I haven't collected all of my costs. Let's do 2014 now. Do a line. I think it makes it a little cleaner. We'll set up our installment receivable for 2014 in the amount of 350000 We'll get rid of our inventory because, again, it's gone in the amount of 245000 And we'll have deferred gross profit from this year in the amount of 105. And now we're going to show some collections. Our cash collected totals 220000 And that will be taken against the installment receivable for 220000 Let's see where we are on our costs. For our 2013 sales, I'm going to come back over to this number. 
I have 84,000 of costs remaining. I just collected 100,000 for 213 cells from the information I give you above. So although this was collected in 2014, it was for 2013 cells. And you can see I've recovered all of my costs and an additional 16,000. So I can realize for 2013, 16,000. Where are we in 2014? Let's leave us a little more room. One more line down. On 2014, my costs from my sales from 2014 are 245,000. I collected cash for 2014 sales. A hundred and twenty thousand. So I still have a hundred and twenty five thousand cost to collect before I can collect any before I can recognize any revenue for two thousand and fourteen. So it's just gonna sit. So I am going to say deferred gross profit for two thousand and fourteen gets debited for the 16,000 from 213 and nothing from 2014 and gets moved into realized gross profit or moved to the income statement in that amount. Because I have recovered only $16,000 more of my 2013 cells than I have cost tied up in them, I can only recognize that in 2013 and I have not yet recovered all of my 2014 I still need to get another 125,000 before I'll recognize any profit these journal entries are how you would recognize profit for the cost recovery method some good news for you the financial statements that would be prepared on the cost recovery method are exactly the same as those that would be prepared from our previous example. The deferred gross profit that remains to be recognized would be calculated as exactly in our prior example, just using the new amounts. So you've already seen that calculation. I think I would like to just look at where we are in the deferred gross profit with you and then call it good. So deferred gross profit, let's stay all on one page for this one. We're going to look right here in this area. We deferred gross profit from 2013 in the amount of 126000 You can see that right here. And we We'll put a 13 here for 2013, and we deferred gross profit of 105,000 for 2014. Also during 2014, we're able to undefer, there's that word, or recognize 16,000 because we've recovered all of our costs plus an additional 16,000 from 2013. So the balance in my deferred gross profit account is, I messed it up, 126000 plus 105000 minus the 16000 or 215000 deferred gross profit at the end of 2014. As you can see, it's not coming out as quickly under the cost recovery method as it did under the installment method. But that's because we have more uncertainty. The further you move down the uncertainty path, the less revenue or the slower the revenue you're going to recognize. Hey, that wasn't so bad. We looked at the installment method and the cost recovery method. And the last couple of pink casts, not anywhere near as long as it would take to have covered in class. Please look at these and then begin your homework problem for chapter 5. The first few homework problems dealt with the first part of the chapter and then 
the last problem, problem 5-2, which was, um, is now available on Connect, has you compute journal entries and gross profit for both the installment method and the cost recovery method.